For my interview today, I'm going to be talking to Dre Baldwin. He is a YouTube sensation with over 100,000 followers. He's an entrepreneur and a motivational speaker. Please bring in Dre. Dre all day. Baldwin. What's up, man? What's going on? How you feeling? Man, bring it in. Good, good. Doing thank today, you. Brother? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm all right, man. Good. Like I said, I wish I would have worn my Vans today, man. Oh, uh, yeah. You're rocking them Jordans real good. Today. I might get you a pair of Jordans. Then. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe. I want one of those hats, man. What's that stand for right there? Why no? Work on your game. The Work F is for game. emphasis. So in 2005, you were actually the first one on YouTube to actually post pro athlete training videos and stuff like that. What uh, kind of motivated you to put stuff like that out there? Well, it was 2006, and the reason that I put that video out was because I had went to a, when I got out of college, I knew I wanted to play professional basketball, but I wasn't that known yet, so I needed to build up a resume. So all of you have been to a job fair before, right? When you go to a job fair, you put on your suit and you hand out resumes. Well, when you're a basketball player, you go to a job fair too. We call it an exposure camp. Okay. And in an exposure camp, you bring your sneakers and your shorts, and you actually play <laughs> the sport in front of an audience of decision makers. So there are coaches, managers, scouts, watch you play, agents, things like that. So it's like a one day like training camp type it thing. It could be one day, it could be seven days. They go different lengths. Because you can have one good game and it can be luck. So they gotta make sure you can really play. So I went there, I played really well, and my footers was on a VHS tape. Y'all remember VHS tapes? Yeah. So <laughs> I knew that tape wasn't gonna last the next 20 years, so I needed to get it on something digital. So I got that tape. Took it to an audiovisual store, got to put it on a CD, CD into a digital file, put it on a brand new website called YouTube.com. That was in 2006. Right so people found that video. They saw it. I wasn't trying to get seen. I was just keeping it for myself. But people saw the video. They said, hey, who do you play for? Who taught you how to play? Can you teach this drill? Do you do that? So I just started taking the workouts I was doing already that no one was seeing, and I just brought a camera with me, and now the world was seeing it on YouTube. Well, it sounds like a lot of people find your uh, training methods and the way you explain it very helpful. Would you ever coach one day? Not basketball coach. I don't really have the patience for that. <laughs> I think I might say the wrong thing to somebody's kid and lose my job anyway. So, Yeah, that'd be me. I'd walk out the first day crying. Yeah. I, I wasn't much of an athlete growing up, but, uh, you know. <laughs> but uh, um, So your pro career, uh, yeah. you've played pro basketball in – Spanning over eight countries, not yeah. over eight, exactly eight countries. Which countries exactly did you play in? Right, see if I can remember. I started in Lithuania. Uh, last place was in Slovakia. In between was Mexico, Germany, Montenegro, Croatia, uh, the USA. Tell me, what was the difference? You've played basketball in the U.S. You know, it yep. was college ball. Yep. But then you've played pro ball in, you know, countries outside of the U.S., overseas. Mm -hmm. Was there a difference you know, in the difficulty levels and when you were training because of the language barriers or anything like that? It wasn't really because of the language barrier, but when you go from collegiate basketball to professional basketball, the level goes up. A lot of people don't understand who are basketball fans in the States, as most people know about the NBA, you know about the, Vegas doesn't have a team, but you know about the Lakers, the Knicks, the Spurs, and they think when you go overseas that it's one big league or that the Europeans aren't as good, but I think they saw from the way the Americans were getting our asses kicked early in the early 2000s that those players outside of the country can actually play. And they watch our players, and they were out there so getting all themselves eyes are better. On you guys, like. Yeah, so when the Americans come over there, an American player, they expect you to be at a very higher level, and they really can play. So you have to bring it every single day. And you have to remember that this is a job. This is a job just like anywhere else that you work. And if you show up to work and you're not ready to perform, you'll lose your job, and they will replace you with somebody else. So you had to show up every day and perform. Did you ever see that happen a lot with a lot of the other American players that were overseas as yeah, well? Yeah, I've seen that happen. I've seen players get over there and not even make it to the first game. They went to practice, and they weren't too good in practice, and they didn't even make it to the game. They sent them back home. But that can happen. That quit. So you got a book out called yeah. Buy a Game. Yeah. So what, what inspired you to call it that? What's the behind the title? Well, Buy a Game is the first book that I wrote, and it actually came from a story when I was in eighth grade. I was talking to my friend. His name was Brandon. He was the best player in our middle What's school. What's up, Brandon? Best <laughs> basketball player in our middle school. And Brandon, he and I were riding back on the bus. We were coming from our eighth grade class trip. We were about to graduate from eighth grade to go to high school. And I was talking to him about my future. He was telling me about his. And I knew he was going to be a great basketball player because he was already better than all of us. And I told him, man, I want to be a basketball player too. I want to at least play in high school. That's what we were talking about. 
he already knew he was going to go to school and be a starter from ninth grade on. I was going to a different school, and I hadn't been that good in middle school. So I asked him as a friend, I said, man, what do I need to do? If I want to be as good as you or I want to just become respectable in basketball, what do I need to do? He said, man, I'm going to give you two tips. He said, the number one thing is you have to stop playing scared. You can't play basketball scared. You play, he was telling me, he said, Dre, you play like you're nervous. You don't ever dribble the ball. You don't play good defense. He said, you just play like you are afraid out there. You can't play like you're afraid. Now, number two thing you need to do, Dre, is you need to go buy a game. And basically, he was telling me I was garbage, by being, but he was being nice about it. He said, you can't dribble, you can't shoot, you can't play defense. All you do is just stand there and you do like one thing well. So if you want to be a basketball player, you need to go get some games. So you need to go buy a game. Like, so buy is in go purchase one. So I titled it that after, when I wrote my first book. And I actually reached out to him and told him that. I said, man, you gave me that advice back in eighth grade, and I remember it. And he said, man, tell me when the book's coming out, and I'll buy it. Right on. Yeah. Right on, right on. Uh, well, I uh, actually heard, and I apologize for actually not having a copy of your book. I couldn't tell me Yeah, about I actually that. give it away for free on my website, on okay. drealday.com, but you can also get it on Amazon. Thank you cool. so much for being on the show, man. Can you tell everybody where uh, they can find you social media-wise? Yeah, well, you can find me on Snapchat right here. Bam, you just right scan there. my shirt. Scan, this is the actual QR to, code. Yeah. So if you scan this, you can follow me on Snapchat. But my website is DreAllDay.com. All right, well, Dre, thank you so much for being on the show, man. Of course. Thank you.